21 Pilots is better Christian music than any actual contemporary Christian music, and it's not even Christian music. Hey guys, welcome back to Kingdom Craft, where we build churches in Minecraft while talking about Christianity. Right now, I'm in Ballygowan, the non-denominational and Pentecostal province on my Christian Minecraft server. And yes, I have made uh, videos that are critical of non-denominationalism, but this is an ecumenical server. There are tons of people on the server from all sorts of different Christian perspectives, and that's why I like the server. There's people here who are very critical of me, but um, they're still on the server that I pay for, by the way. So, today I'm going to be talking about 21 Pilots. Part of the reason I'm very critical of non-denominationals is I'm usually a big snob when it comes to music style. I'm usually very much into traditional Christian music and classical music. I don't listen to any contemporary Christian music ever. It's just not good. And I know that there's always going to be that one person who's like, Bro, but what about this one contemporary Christian band? It's totally different than the others. It's totally not just a slightly improved version of an already crappy style. See, so yeah, I don't listen to contemporary Christian music, and um, I don't listen to much pop and rock in general, although I will say secular pop and rock is better than Christian pop and rock. I listen to traditional Christian music, which is amazing, and classical music. And I don't like when people, when people use the word secular music, because technically, like, Mozart counts as secular music. When people speak of secular music, they act as though the only two options are degenerate modern pop and rap, or the garbage crip Christian ripoffs of those styles. No. For me, secular music is Mozart, and Christian music is Bach. Got it? Good. So that's the paradigm I'm coming from. But the one exception is that I really do like 21 Pilots. They're the one modern band that I don't just sort of like, but I really do like. I really like them. Um, now, my, my, my fiancé doesn't like them. And I understand why, because their fan base is often kind of cringe. Their fan base is often, you know, very liberal. And it's debatable whether 21 Pilots would count as, like, a Christian band or not. I wouldn't consider them, like, a, a Christian rock band. Um, but they do have a lot of Christian themes. And I appreciated them way before I became Christian, and in some ways, their music actually helped me become Christian. Uh, their music wasn't what converted me. Everyone knows my story. I converted at a Christian-themed classical music summer camp in the Midwest. That's what converted me at age 14. But um, when I was 13, I listened to a lot of 21 Pilots music. That was when their Blurry Face album came out. And a lot of the Christian themes in their songs got me more open-minded about Christianity. It didn't convert me, but it got me thinking about Christian themes. It got me to respect Christianity a bit more. Because I came from a very, you know, secular leftist background. I had no respect for Christianity. They made me respect it. So, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about them. And a lot of their songs are Christian, but it's very encrypted. There's very few of their songs that are, like, explicitly Christian, and the ones that are are usually, like, their earlier stuff on, like, self-titled, and the one song that mentions Jesus by name is in the No Fun Intended album, which is not even a 21 Pilots album, it's just Tyler Joseph's personal album that was recorded in his basement when he was 17. <laughs> so, that's... Th those are some... There's some really good songs there with some really profound lyrics there, nonetheless. I think he's a genius. I think they're both geniuses in 21 Pilots, Tyler and Josh alike. I'm, I'm think I've been thinking a lot about them lately because their new album Clancy is coming out. But yeah, I really I've always really liked their music. Their music has always been very complex, just musically speaking. If you study music theory like me, then you'll know that the reason people who study music theory are generally snobby against pop music is pop music generally uses the same four chords. It uses a one chord, a four chord, a five chord, and a six chord. That's all that pop music generally uses, not 21 Pilots. And 21 Pilots actually writes about this in their most famous song, Stressed Out. Uh, Tyler says, I wish I found some chords in an order that is new. And yes, as a composer myself, I compose music. All the music in my videos, by the way, uh, generally speaking, I compose my own music. In my more like Comic Sans style videos, generally I get that music from the YouTube audio library, I don't write that. But in my uh, Minecraft videos, I compose 
basically all the music. So the music that you're hearing right now, uh, I, I compose it. So yeah, I, I understand it's hard to find chords in an order that is new. Um, but if you listen to 21 Pilots music and you analyze it, you will find that they often do succeed in finding chords in an order that is new and very interesting. Like in their song Overcompensate, the, the four chord opening in their, in their brand new song Overcompensate, it's a really interesting new chord progression. So musically, I respect it because it is very musically complex, very creative chord progressions and stuff. But there's several reasons I respect the lyrics as well. Um, so... One reason, one big reason, is that none of the lyrics are degenerate. Most modern pop is degenerate in some way or another. Okay, nice, I found a cape. Most modern pop, rap, all that stuff is degenerate. I know that there is some Christian rap, I guess you could say sometimes. Most rap has very disgusting themes. Most rap is like that. Okay, people are arguing about denominations in the chat, because of course they are. Why, why wouldn't they? Most rap has very disgusting themes about, like, sex, drugs, violence, crime, all that sort of stuff. And 21 Pilots, some of their music is rap. I wouldn't call them rap artists, but there, there is rap music in their, uh, like, there is rap in their songs. Um, but none of their songs have any degenerate themes. Only five of, like, five or so of Tyler's songs have anything to do with, like, romance at all, and they're all about his wife. That is very wholesome and based. And Tyler has a lot of other wholesome themes. Like, he's written a song about his grandfather. That song is Legend. He's written a song about his mother, House of Gold. He's written a song about his brother, Slow Town. He's written a song about a girl uh, he knew from church that had Down syndrome but was very inspiring to him. Uh, that song is called Ruby. And I think um, one form of, you know, positivity and inclusivity that... Christians not only need to be good at, but are really good at, is inclusivity for Down syndrome people. Because there's many countries like Iceland and Denmark that literally are actively doing a genocide of Down syndrome people. They say they cure Down syndrome. All that really means is they aborted all the children who have Down syndrome. That is genocide. That is not curing, that is not curing anything. Um, so it's very important to show love and respect and appreciation for people with Down syndrome. And I really appreciate that there's an entire uh, pop song called Ruby. I wouldn't, I'm not sure if you'd classify Twin Pilots as pop or rock or alternative. I don't know. I don't know how modern music works. It's too confusing. I'm a classical music guy. You know what I mean, though. They have very wholesome themes. What are some other themes? Oh, yeah. Neon Gravestones. Neon Gravestones um, really, uh, it, it criticizes how, like, a lot of modern culture glorifies self-harm. And it says that we should, instead of glorifying that, we should focus on life. Like, the final line is very powerful. It says... Find your grandparents or someone of age. Pay some respect for the path that they paved. To life they were dedicated. Now that should be celebrated. That is a really awesome line. And that one song reshaped my entire perspective on how we should uh, approach um, issues of like self-harm and stuff. So um, their, their lyrics have been very influential on me. But I want to talk about some of their earlier stuff. And when I was... On, when I was not Christian, I still listened to a lot of their songs because I didn't know what the lyrics meant. I just un, I just recognized that it was like very musically good. Um, so I, I would listen to a lot of songs without knowing what the lyrics meant at all. I would sing along to the songs without knowing what the lyrics meant. And partially because I always failed English class in middle school. I didn't fail. I, I did pretty badly. I was never good in English class. I was never good at literary analysis. So that's another reason I didn't really understand the themes of the songs very much. So I would just sing songs like Taxi Cab or Trees or Holding On To You and not realize that these songs were directly talking about God and Tyler's relationship with God. I would say the majority of Tyler's songs, the majority of the earlier songs especially, are Tyler struggling in his relationship with God. Um, and that's why I say his music isn't explicitly Christian music. Uh, but in some sense, I think it's a little more valuable than most contemporary christian music you know i don't bother listening to contemporary christian music because it's just so bad but but um what i will notice about it is every contemporary christian song is just pure like happiness and and praise not a bad thing most of our hymns are sort of like that as well 
but the Psalms are not necessarily like that. The Psalms are a lot about struggling with God. There's a lot of sad Psalms. When was the last time you heard a, a sad contemporary worship psalm? Like, there are hymns in minor keys. I think classical hymns are better at that. The but contemporary is all just in a major key with cheesy chord progressions. Very, very feminine, very like sort of Jesus is my boyfriend type songs. And I mean, those are problems with the lyrics. Even if Saul, even if contemporary worship had great lyrics, it would still be bad because it's just musically bad. The chords are bad. Uh, the, the chord progressions are bad, rather. Chords in, in and of themselves are not bad. Um, unless they're out of tune, and they're always out of tune if they're played on the viola. I'm a violist. I can make viola jokes like that. But 21 Pilots lyrics, it's not an explicit affirmation of faith, which is why I wouldn't call it explicitly Christian music. It's about struggling with faith. But it, I appreciate the honesty. There's a lot of honesty about struggling with faith. Um, and that meant a lot to me as someone who was struggling with the faith myself. Like, I, I wasn't committed to the faith, but s seeing that honesty really made me think about the Christian faith in a way that I hadn't before. And one of the songs I'm thinking about is Be Concerned. Um, this is one of their most explicitly Christian songs, but once again, it's it's not an explicit confession of faith, this song. It's, it's about struggling with doubt and recognizing his own doubt. Um, some lines from that song, I'm just speaking from memory are um it's so hard to it's so hard to motivate me to devote a single inch of me to something i can't see i don't mean to pry but why would you even make the eyes and i was thinking through that while i was like a non-christian i was like yeah it is it is really hard for me to motivate myself to devote a single inch of me to something i can't see I, like back then i wanted to believe god was real i wanted to believe that there was an afterlife as i called it now i don't like the word afterlife because it makes it sound like a bonus round according to proper christian theology uh, what we look for in the age to come is much more of a real life than anything we've had in this age so i don't i don't like the word afterlife it sounds like something less real it sounds like a bonus round um but you know what i mean um in like as when i was a teenager i wanted to believe god was real but I had no confidence in that, and I had no commitment to that. A joke I used to make in middle school is uh, the, the, there are two big questions I have in life. The second biggest question is whether God exists, and the first question is whether this girl I like likes me back. And my point was that I, I care more about getting a girlfriend than whether the universe has a creator, which is really lame of me. And um, spoiler alert, no, she did not like me back. <laughs> Um, I had zero riz when I was a teenager. Uh, but yeah, Be Concerned, that song really got me thinking because it, it, it was honest. It was honest. Like, it's hard to motivate me to devote something to something I can't see. Um, and then a, another line in that song I really like is, I will deny you for years and I'll make you raise me from the dead. And even though I wasn't a really believer at this time, I felt kind of convicted by that nonetheless because it's like, yeah, that is kind of what I'm doing. I was like, if God does exist, I'm going to want him to raise me from the dead. And if I find out that God does exist, then I will be kind of embarrassed to um, have denied him for so many years. And maybe I should stop doing that. So what the 21 Pilots music did do was it planted in my mind a sense that I should probably eventually turn to God. But I kept putting it off. I kept putting it off. I got this growing sense that I should probably turn to God. Um, and there's another song, Taxi Cab. That, that's probably one of their most explicitly Christian songs as a whole. And it's, it's, just a, it's just a really powerful song because the end, it says like, it's basically Tyler's ki kidnapper. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's Tyler. It's the, it's the character in the song. The, the narrator of the song is kidnapped and brought in a taxi cab and... There's, like, the drivers are three men, which represents the Holy Trinity, of course. And then they tell him that they're uh, driving him towards the morning sun, where all his blood is washed away and all he did will be undone. Like, all of your sins will be forgiven. And, dang, that, that is a very poetic way to put it. Now, I probably butchered it. You, it you, you should listen to the actual song to understand what I'm talking about. But... That music really got me thinking about these Christian themes, about the themes of forgiveness, about turning to God for forgiveness, about all those things. And now I'll... I've, I've said positive things about Twin and Pilots. Now I'll get into some criticism. Because a lot of their music is about mental health. 
and mental health struggles. And this is probably the most controversial view of mine, is that I really think the modern cult of mental health is completely wrong. And I do not like mental health awareness and activism. I think it's a completely flawed view of what the mind is, of what the soul is, and I've seen it do a lot of very bad things. And I say this as someone who previously struggled a lot with those things. I'm not speaking as someone who's ignorant. Um, so I feel like they give a bit too much attention to mental health struggles. But, and I will say this, they understand that mental health struggles are inseparable from spiritual struggles. And that's very important. Now, they often uh, use demons to talk about depression. I'm not sure if they mean that literally or metaphorically. I certainly think it's literal. I certainly think that it, you cannot deny that there is a demonic element to, at least, if not depression itself, then to the way a lot of people react to depression, the way a lot of people um, become when they're facing it. And yes, that is one of the most controversial views that I have. More controversial more controversial than my take on evolution. Not quite as controversial as my take on the Nephilim, though. Nothing is more controversial than my take on the Nephilim. Um, last month, I released a video on, my, on the Nephilim, so you can watch that if you want my view on the Nephilim. Um, and I, I, I could tell you what it is now, but I already told you back then, so I don't need to tell you that again. But uh, I do appreciate that they understand how truly demonic a lot of the mental health problems young people are facing are. Um, if you look at the the twisted reality young people are living in today, the twisted realities of Gen Z, how could it not be demonic? And I'm, a, I'm not a charismatic or Pentecostal. I'm a Presbyterian. Presbyterians are the least superstitious brand of Christianity that, that there is. We're even less superstitious than the Quakers, because at least the Quakers had some, like, mystical stuff. Um, and we're less superstitious than Universalists, because Universalists are willing to affirm anything as long as it's liberal enough. We are the least superstitious brand of Christianity out there. Uh, but I believe that the demonic is real, and I believe that so many of the, not just mental health struggles, but just the zeitgeist of Gen Z overall, and so many of the stuff that we deal with, with this overall ugliness and degeneracy and unnaturalness, I think there's a, a big demonic element. I think Gen Z needs one collective exorcism. Gen Z needs to come back to the church. So, I 20, 21 Pilots music is good at setting the stage for why we all need to think truly about our relationship to God. And why we all need to understand that all of us are in the midst of a real spiritual struggle. All of us are in a spiritual battle. We all have an inward battle, whether it is uh, clear to us or not. Some people have more pronounced internal struggles than others. What 21 Pilots needs to do is to stop being so you know, ambivalent about their faith and to make an explicit declaration of faith. I think it would have a profound impact if one of these days they just made a song that was pure faith, not a mixture of faith and doubt like most of their songs are. If they just finally take that existential leap of faith. And there are songs, prominent 21 Pilots songs, where Tyler admits that he kind of knows he should do this. In Ode to Sleep, like, it's part of the lyrics of Ode to Sleep are just so fast, like such fast rapping lyrics, it's hard to even discern what he's saying at all. But he's saying, like, I ask forgiveness three times, same amount that I denied. That's, he's referring to Peter's denial of Jesus, St. Peter's denial of Jesus. And he says, um, I'm afraid to tell you who I adore. I, I won't tell you who I'm singing towards. He's admitting that he's ashamed uh, to speak about his faith publicly because he knows that he won't, you know, be popular if he talks too explicitly about his faith. And he says, because of that, in the lyrics, he says, metaphorically, I'm a whore, and that's denial number four. He's he's saying that he's, he's a whore, metaphorically, he's a whore because he's selling himself out to the music industry and denying God by doing so. So he knows what he has to do. And 
I, even though he's not doing the right thing, I appreciate the honesty. Because so many of us, we know what we have to do, and we don't do it. We know we have to submit to God, but we don't do it. So, if you're watching this, and you're not sure if you're a Christian or not, I think there's a part of you that knows what you're supposed to do. That knows you're supposed to be committed to God. That knows that um, you deny, you've deny denied God for years, but you still want him to raise you from the dead. I would say that you need to just take that leap of faith. And it requires uh, le letting go of your own control of your life. Christianity is an admission that we are not the Lord lords of our life. Jesus is the Lord of our life. And it will need, uh, it will require some act of the Holy Spirit, I believe, to really get anyone to make that full commitment. But technically nothing is stopping you. You should do it as soon as possible. There's no reason to delay. Okay, guys, that's, uh, that's just my analysis of, of 21 Pilots music. There's a lot of things going on there. There's so much I could talk about. Uh... I, I like the, the trench Dima lore and stuff, even though I never fully understand it. I only sort of partially understand it. Um, I also would just like to say that uh, the reason I like 21 Pilots is just nostalgia, honestly, because every sort of 21 Pilots album corresponds to like a different time period in my life. Like the Blurry Face album, like I said, that as well as self-titled and Vessel, because that's just what I was listening to back then when I first discovered them, that corresponds to like my middle school era when I was... Um, middle school was when I was struggling with uh, not sure if I believed in God or anything and I was idolizing you know getting a girlfriend which I didn't um, probably there's a reason for that I didn't uh, and I needed to be a bit more sanctified first and I was struggling with that in middle school then there was high school and high school uh, that's when the trench album came out when I was in high school now at that point I was a Christian but Trench is all about feeling alone and feeling trapped. I know that for them it was like some mental thing. My mental health was fine in high school, but I was alone and trapped because I was a Christian in a very, very atheist high school, and I was completely alone socially, partly for that reason. Partly there was a social drama that was completely my fault. Um, but a lot of it was because, you know, it's really hard being a Christian in a New York public high school. Not just New York, I'm sure all across the country. I'm sure many of you guys can relate to that. I'm sure many of you guys are Christians in secular high schools. And I, I feel you. I, I feel your pain. I promise you, it gets better. Uh, God will put people in your life. You just have to stay faithful. And it sucks. But think of yourself as a monk. Think of yourself as a pilgrim. Think of yourself as one of the desert fathers. Um, this time of being alone will sanctify you. And it'll make you a better Christian for when you actually do find someone, whether it's like a friend or a uh, husband or wife or, or whatever. So... Uh, keep praying, stay strong. Uh, Jesus says uh, that those who endure to the end will be saved. Then there was uh, Scaled and Icy, which is the next album that came out. And this came out when I was just getting into college. And that album is like, I know that like they work it into the lore that it's like actually just propaganda by the bad guys or whatever. But it really, it was just they, they made that album so they could experiment with like a happy pop style. And I, that's actually my favorite album of theirs because it's just you know, really pleasant music to go along to, um, honestly, college being the most pleasant time of my life. It's like I've always had tons of friends in college. I've always uh, had tons of other Christians to fellowship with. There haven't really been any major problems for me in college. Like, the biggest problem for me in college was uh, having arguments with a bunch of Baptists, and if that's the biggest problem, it's not a problem. So, and now that I'm getting married and stuff, I'm engaged. There's a new album coming out, so... Uh, I'm excited to, <laughs> to see the rest of that album. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know that only a small percentage of, you, percentage of you guys will be able to appreciate this. Maybe I'll put some links to 21 Pilots songs in the bio, uh, in the, sorry, in the description of this video. But I'll also put a link to some churches that you can go to if you want to attend church. So thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys later.